Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have something super, super cool. It's a line from Star Ace that we've been following for quite a little while now, and as of right now, this was the only other one that's out that I absolutely needed to have in my collection from the Ray Harryhausen line, again from Star Ace. And as you can see, we've got the Ymir, and it looks super, super nice from the images I've seen, as well as the beautiful image that we have here in the front. You may be able to take notice, though, that up there in the right-hand corner, we have a circle there that says that this is the normal version. So this isn't the deluxe version. The majority of them, and in fact, I think almost every one except for this one, potentially, I got the deluxe version. This one I got the standard version because it was a little bit cheaper and the only real addition I believe is the uh, light there that he's grabbing onto. So I chose to go with the normal version here just to save a few dollars and uh, I'm sure at some point I'll regret that decision but for now I'm happy with it. And you can again see the box art looks beautiful here on the side even though it's a little bit dark you can see another nice image of the Ymir and again some more really cool information on the creature down here. And then here on the back, we've got some more images of the Ymir and uh, some more information on the creature as well as, you know, sneak peeks here of the Redosaurus and the Talos from the Harryhausen line as well, both of which have been reviewed already here on my channel. So I've actually had this here for a little while now. I just haven't had time to get it up for review or even open it. So I'm very excited to do just that. So let's pop it out of the box right now. So first of all, we do have kind of like a little stand here. You can see that again, we have the Harryhausen 100 years uh, logo right here with various different Harryhausen creatures and creations right there. And then you've got like a nice little rocky area, kind of like an earthy area that uh, maybe like the road, I think potentially that has been torn up as well as an area that obviously has the footprint for our Yimmer. And then we've got the model itself. And just like I expected, well, that fits in there very nicely, but just as I expected, it is huge. Pretty much again, what you would expect from one of these star ace releases, because they've all been very sizable, making them even more impressive and this one is absolutely no exception. Such a beautiful looking model. I really think Star Ace has gone above and beyond to give us some of the coolest Harryhausen models that have ever existed. I can remember a time where I would just go on eBay and just search for these Harryhausen models in hopes of finding something that, you know, would be Harryhausen related that I could add to my collection. And they were just never really too plentiful and they were very hard to come by any type of a model kit or anything of Harryhausen models so I am so thankful that Star Ace has these coming out one after another more and more incredible releases for the Harryhausen line though I'm at this point where like I have the majority of the creatures that I've wanted from the Harryhausen films or there's definitely some more and uh, we'll have to wait and see what else Star Ace pumps out but at this point, I'm pretty happy with the ones that I have now. So until they announce like the dragon or something, I think I'll be okay. And when it comes to the Harryhausen line, I would like to get the Kraken, but I don't think that one's going to happen right now. Regardless, again, this looks incredible. So let's jump to a closer look right now. So starting up here at the head sculpt, you can see it looks very, very nice. Some really nice looking detail. Lots of beautiful skin texture. Again, looking really quite accurate as far as the appearance goes. And look at that eye. That eye is gorgeous. The detail on that is honestly incredible. I don't know if that's paintwork or if that is a decal they've used, but it looks beautiful. I really like the eye and the eye has a nice gloss coat to it as well. You can kind of see it shining there as we turn it, allowing the light to hit it. We actually have an articulated jaw on this, which we haven't had too often throughout this line. I believe maybe on the Cyclops. I forget. I think there was one that has had an articulated jaw prior to this, but you can see the inside of the mouth has a very cool looking tongue sculpt in there as well as the teeth, all sculpted, all painted very nicely. Some very dark tones of color for the teeth and the texturing is like super rugged and a very alien-like, exactly as you would expect it, I guess, to be on an alien-like creature like this, but I don't know if it's just been so long since I've seen the film. I don't really, I don't know, I guess I've never really paid too much attention to what the tongue looked like, but the tongue looks very, very cool. 
And uh, the inside of the mouth also sports a nice gloss coat. The teeth are painted really nicely. They as well have a nice gloss coat. And on top of having kind of like an off-white type coloration, I can see kind of like a wash that's been applied to them. So that we add a nice element of realism and some paint work to that as well. Some paint variation. Very nicely articulated jaw as well. You can see it works really beautifully, allowing some posability with your figure. On top of the pose that we have been given, you can see the nostrils are sculpted really nicely. We have some gorgeous greens as well as like variations of browns throughout there's also some really nice dry brushing techniques they've used to highlight the detail throughout the course of the model you can see the ears sculpted out really nicely as we lead up here you have kind of like a uh, row of ridges that run along the back here of our Ymir and they are also very nicely painted with kind of like a dark brown although you can see some greens added to that area as well some more beautiful fine detail to those areas. You can also see some shading with some darker tones. As we move down the back of the neck, you've got some nice skin creasing, skin wrinkling, showing off some movement on our creature. And then as we lead back here, you can see some more ridges picking up, actually quite large ridges in this area. Again, some more fantastic looking, very rough and rugged looking skin texture throughout the course of this and some more beautiful paintwork. You can see they have added a lot of really nice coloration throughout the course of the model. You've got some nice muscle definition moving down and I like that they've highlighted the muscle definition like they've uh, very nicely darkened the color around the muscles there and then as you move down you've got a few more ridges kind of hanging off at the back of the arm some scoots running down the arm right here to kind of give it a little bit of an armored like appearance a little bit more ridges right there and then as you move down into that hand the hand looks super super cool with those three digits let me try to turn this without beating the crap out of the camera and you can see the nails are painted really nice as we actually have variation of color i could see like some kind of like yellowish tones, some brownish tones, and even greenish tones within the nails. And the nails also have a nice gloss coat to them, which is nice to see. And it's really hard to get a good angle there. We can see another angle of the hand. These models, again, are quite large, so they are a little awkward to review in such a small space. But as you continue to move down, you can see that those ridges decrease and then pick back up, and they have kind of like some separation in between a few different areas right there before picking up into some smaller ridges running along the back of the creature. They almost look like uh, like fins running down the back of the Yimmer. And uh, again, some more beautiful paintwork, some more beautiful skin texture throughout. It's kind of covered in these bumpy sort of uh, almost like osteoderm like scales throughout which looks really nice and you can see if we get nice and close there is quite a bit of paint application added to it they've done a good job of adding like a wash to it as well as again some nice dry brushing to highlight that detail perfectly throughout and then as you continue to move down here through the course of the tail one thing that is nice is that there's no uh, parts that you have to connect like some others you like the retosaurus for example I had to connect the tail that's not the case for the Ymir it's all together immediately as soon as you get the figure but you can see as we lead down the course of the tail we start to kind of decrease with those sort of osteoderm like scales and then we have a really nice fine scaling as well as some nice skin texture throughout. And you can really pick up on that darker wash that's been applied perfectly throughout this area as you lead out the length of the tail. And we reach out here to those two little areas here. The two tips of the tail looks really nice. You can also see again we continue to have that line running along the top of the spinal column here of our creature really really beautiful paintwork and then looking at here on the opposing side you can again see the head sculpt looks perfect honestly and uh, again that eye paint looks great but as you lead down here you can see more of that wrinkling increasing in the neck down here in the throat region as well some more dark tones just really nice subtle additions to the paintwork here you can get an idea here of the pecs of our Ymir, and then again, as we lead down the course of the underside, a pretty good idea, good look here at the skin texture throughout. They've also darkened some of the areas here in like the thigh leading into the groin of our Ymir. You can also see the leg again has some nice muscle definition displayed throughout. You've got a really nice foot sculpt, very almost like an armored like appearance running down the front of the foot with some nice scoots down the toes. Again, beautifully painted nails, similarly painted to the way that they are up on the hands. They look really, really good. And again, speaking of the hands, you can see that we've got that very creepy hand with the three digits yet again over here. And uh, let me try to find a way to get this here in camera. There you go. You can see a nice 
shot of that hand. Again, those perfectly painted nails and that really nice arm sculpt as we lead along here. Again, with those kind of ridges leading off of the arm. And then we get back up here toward the back again. We get a good look at what it looks like back here. Really, really vibrant sculpt like that. Detail just pops so nicely on this, as all of these Harryhausen models really have. A little area here on the back with some more scoots running down the back of the foot on this side. You can again see the really nice foot sculpt with the scoots down the toes. Those again, perfectly painted nails. Yet again, they have a nice gloss coat to them. Not overly glossy, I would say like the perfect amount of gloss for toenails. And then you can check out the muscle definition as well as again, those extremely big uh, rough and rugged looking scales. That skin texture as you move along, you've got the kneecap right there. Again, everything looks honestly amazing on this Ymir. It is just phenomenal. Definitely the best version that I've ever seen. And I love the fact that it comes pre-painted. Of course, you can actually get the model kits now for the Harryhausen models. Star Ace has released these with the colored versions, the painted versions, which are the ones that I usually go for. And now they're also beginning to release like the model kits. So you can purchase the kits themselves and paint them up if you would choose to. So it's really up to you. But this thing is incredible. And then we've got a nice quick glance here at the very small base that we have for the standard version. You again have the Harryhausen logo right there, painted really nicely with some gold. And uh, again, as you move through, you can see the road kind of busted up and everything all cracks and everything. Really nice paintwork for this as well as you have some nice grays as well as a dark black wash that has definitely highlighted all of the details here of the road for the, I guess you could call this the base, just this little extra, and again, that footprint there to put the foot into. And then here on the underside, you can again see Ray Harryhausen's Ymir, and then it is produced with the permission of the Ray and Diana Harryhausen Foundation, and then yet again, the Star Ace logo. So I would say this is easily just as impressive as all of the other Harryhausen models that I've taken a look at from Star Ace so far. Absolutely killing it is exactly what they are doing with this line. And as you can see, even though this little piece of the earth here definitely makes for a nice addition to the model, it isn't necessary. You don't absolutely need it for the model to stand. It stands perfectly without that piece, especially since it's in a tripod position with the tail touching. But there are no issues with this standing at all, and I don't foresee any type of an issue coming in the future because it just has like that perfect amount of balance, especially again with the tail touching. But as you go over here for a length, you're looking at about 15, maybe even a little over, maybe actually about 15 and a quarter inches or around the 39 centimeter mark for a length and then for a height. And it's definitely quite tall. You are looking at about just shy of 11 inches or around 27 and a half, closing in on 28 centimeters. Very quite large for a size comparison. There is Mr. Papo T-Rex, the Attack Pack Colovasaurus, and Robert Muldoon from the Mattel Jurassic World toy line next to our Star Ace Ymir. And you can definitely see that it is a massive model, like really quite tall, really sizable, and... uh Definitely a beautifully sized model, very striking sized model, definitely the type of model that if someone were to walk into your house, into your collection room, it's going to spark their interest, it's really going to draw them in, and I definitely think you can see that here, just showing you how much taller it is than these other figures before it. And then for a few random comparisons, we have the Schleich Dial Blaceratops, the Safari LTD U Tyrannus, and the Collect Day Dimetrodon. Yet again, standing in here to give you a good idea of the fact that this is quite tall, quite large as a whole. But for another comparison, and for one final comparison, we have the Star Ace Redosaurus next to the Ymir here, also from Star Ace. And I haven't really done too many comparisons between the different Star Ace Harryhausen releases in the past, just because once I get them, they're so large, I usually put them very safely in the back of a shelf, and then I have a bunch of other figures in front of them. But luckily for me, the Redosaurus was still out and accessible, so I decided it would be fun to bring this one in and show a comparison just in case you happen to have the Redosaurus. It should help to give you again an idea of the fact that the Ymir is very, very impressive in the size department, just like every Harryhausen model really has been so far. So this Star Ace Ray Harryhausen Ymir 
20 million miles to Earth, Ymir is an incredible release yet again, and I must say that this entire Harryhausen line from Star Ace has been a dream come true to collectors like myself, people that grew up watching the Harryhausen films, and those films mean so much to so many people, myself included, because they are some of the earliest films that I was given the opportunity to see involving stop motion, and not only that, Ray Harryhausen is the master of stop motion, there's no doubt in my mind. Of course, Willis O'Brien, who came before Harryhausen, was also a master of stop motion, but I feel like it was so perfected by Ray Harryhausen, and uh, you can see that when you watch all of his films, like there was just so much incredible work put into all of the stop motion in all of his films that I'm so happy to see a line like this completely dedicated to the man himself Ray Harryhausen and all of the amazing creatures that he created over the years and this is another one that is just a beautiful creation on his part and another film that I grew up watching and loving and now as an adult have in my collection and I always kind of wanted a really good Ymir model and again it's another instance where there just weren't really all that many out there or not that many that are accessible so unfortunately I never had the pleasure of adding one to my collection until now and again Star Ace has really delivered on this version giving us a beautiful very screen accurate as far as I can tell anyway sculpt that perfectly replicates the Ymir from the film and on top of that we've got a really nice pose for our Ymir standing here kind of like turned slightly to its left pretty much exactly as it's kind of displayed in the film almost looking a little frightened kind of panicked and that's sort of like the way that it appears through the majority of the film so it creates that very nice pose that looks like it is basically like a screenshot from the film on top of that the paint job is phenomenal they have added so many really nice different tones of color throughout making sure that it looks as lifelike and realistic as possible on top of that they've added in very nice areas of like gloss coats for the eyes the mouth the nails and i like that the gloss coat for the eyes and the mouth look like they're not like the exact same gloss coat they've used everywhere. Like the mouth has that saliva-like look. The eyes have that nice wet look. But there's also a gloss coat for the nails. But they're not as glossy as the other areas. They're more like glossy like you would see on nails. So they did a very good job on top of everything when it comes to the realism aspect of the model as a whole. So yet again, this is another for sure recommendation from me. If you have been collecting the Harryhausen line, I feel like this model is just as much of a must-have as every other model that I've had the pleasure of taking a look at here on my channel. And another one that, again, is a massive recommendation from me. So I will include a link in the description to where you can purchase this model for yourself. So make sure you check that link. Go grab this model before it sells out because I believe these are limited editions so it won't last forever and you definitely don't want to miss it. So grab the model again through the link in the description and make sure you also like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you in the next review. Thanks for watching.